Hi, I'm Bill Carmody, and I'm the Marketing Whisperer. Today on my program, I can't tell you how excited I am to have Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone is not only an incredible entrepreneur and you know manages uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in business, but was actually recently named one of the top seven most influential CEOs in the world uh, by a UK-based magazine. Grant, welcome to the program. Hey, Bill, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm really, really pleased to have you here today. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was you know, this idea that you had mentioned last time you and I spoke about being a millionaire is now the middle class, and there's sort of been a shift. And I wanted to sort of get into that with you today on the program. Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I remember being, I was brought up in the middle class in Lake Charles, Louisiana, single mother. My dad died when I was 10. And I remember even then, this is what, 35 years ago? For, uh, yeah, 40 plus years ago. I'm 10 years old, 10 to 15, 16 years old. As a teenager, I'm watching everything. You know, as a, as a young child, looks at everything in their environment and they start questioning things. And I was asking my mom, because she kept saying, we're in the middle class. Your dad really did well for us. You know, we have more than most. She's trying to educate me <laughs> how much better off we are than when she was brought up and also than maybe other people I go to school with. And I kept saying, but mom, you're always scared about money. You're always clipping coupons. Every time we buy something, you're worried. Every time. It, wasn't, it didn't matter whether it was a can of beans or something we'd already bought, we ate. And she'd be like, let's put all that in the refrigerator and save it. And she was doing the best she could to conserve. But I was really like, wow, is that what the middle class is? Yeah. Well, and when you're a kid, a million dollars sounds, sounds like so much money. You know, when you're a kid, you're thinking, God, if I had a million dollars, I could do anything, right? Yeah, but, but if you're a kid growing up in Chicago today, and I tell you, if I mentioned the word $5,000, you're like, five grand, man, I could get out of here. Yeah. So, so it's all really relative, right? The guy, the guy in Iowa that's making 70 grand a year, he's like, man, I'm doing better than most of my people. The entire middle class, by the way, is built on a comparison. Yes. It's all a comparison of some other country, some other neighbor, somebody else is doing worse off. But if you look at the facts today, the, the, the middle class that so many of us have inspired to get into and that other countries are trying to emulate is actually a, a, a couple of hundred million people that are suffering. Mm -hmm. They're overlooked by the media because the politicians can't afford to lose them as voters. That's the voting class in America is the middle class. So. And all this is tied into the Federal Reserve, U.S. dollars, debt, homes, all, all the ideas in the middle class, the college debt, the $1.3 trillion in college debt. If you didn't have a middle class, you would not be able to lend $1.3 million to people for college. Well, you know, and, and when I was a kid, you know, I grew up on the lower end of middle class, you know, and, and I, looking back on it now, I'm really impressed with how well my parents did because my first job out of college, I made twice as much as both my parents combined. You know, it was just like, that's insane. You know, how did they actually raise me? How did they survive? How did that all work out? We lived in a small town of Santa Rosa, and I remember one day... I had this you know, experience where we went to dinner and I looked around and all my relatives were there and I'm thinking, oh my God, who's gonna pay for this meal? You know, This is gonna be one of the most expensive meals we've ever had. We're at this restaurant, it's fancy, it's nice, linen tablecloth, the whole thing. And I remember my uncle just you were, reaching- You were at Olive Tree. Yeah, exactly. Olive Garden. No, Olive this, Garden. Olive this, Garden. Is, yeah. this was actually at a high end restaurant called the Hilltop in Santa Rosa. It was like a really, it was one of the nicest restaurants in Santa Rosa. And I remember my uncle pulls out his credit card and just hands it to the waiter. And it was no discussion. There was, he didn't look at the bill. He didn't look at anything. And I thought, my God, that's who I want to be like. I want to be the guy that can just pull out his credit card and not even look at the bill. And that was my financial imprint, you know? Yeah, and, that, and, and, and your uncle, your uncle probably paid the bill that month. He probably paid it off when it came due 20 days later. Exactly. I mean, you know? that's, and, and to me, and to me, the thing about it was, is that my uncle had, he'd, he'd run several Howard stores. He did all these things. And I, and I, then he became the person that I wanted to emulate because I thought, okay, if I want to not be poor or if I want to be beyond the lower end of middle class, you know, I need to be an entrepreneur. I need to basically go step up and I need to sort of figure out how to emulate a guy like him who basically money is not the driving force in his life. Where for me as a kid, it was, you know, it's like, can we afford those shoes? Can I, you know, can we, can we make? buy this thing or do I have to wait till it's my birthday or Christmas, you know, and it's just a different mentality. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I just realized, I'm like, hey, this middle class thing m might not be everything that is cracked up to be. And over the last 35 years, basically, the 16-year-old the kid was right. Yeah. It is not what it's cracked up to be, okay? It's built on a bunch of hype 
it's it, it's built on the back of people. It, it's really a political agenda, okay? Mm -hmm. If we have a middle class that will protect their jobs, their taxes, their property, then those people will go out and vote for one side or the other. That's all the politicians ever talk about, the middle class jobs. The truth is the middle class is a trap, okay? The average the average middle class person makes somewhere between 40,000 by definition, between forty thousand and and maybe one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I know people in New York City where you live, or in Miami where I live, at one hundred and fifteen grand. There's a good chance that there's no money left over. Yes, to save at the end of the year. Absolutely. Well, and, and so to me, I'm curious about, so you've, you've written like five best-selling books, you know, incredible knowledge. You've been sharing all of your expertise, you know, one of the greatest, uh, Grant Cardone University, one of the fast, fantastic sales schools I've ever seen online. It's fantastic. I mean, you've got a lot of, 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 of gifts that you're giving to your audience. What, how did you come up with this sort of 10x strategy, this idea that it's not about the incremental, it's about the exponential? Where did that come from and how has that really driven you to to get out of the middle class mindset and you know not just be a millionaire but to be a, a you know, hundred millionaire 300 millionaire you know what I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well thank, thank you I, I mean I'm really blessed at w what's happened for me and, and I've worked very hard and it's been a long long process but what I want to do now is I want to share with people the mistakes I've made and the things I did right so you know operating in increments okay the, the, I talk about this in, in a, a, a program that we created called playbook to millions mm -hmm. operating in increments is the way our parents teach us teach yes. us e e even you're taught this as a child you have to walk before you can run well a actually that's not true a, a, ch a baby actually stumbles along <laughs> quite fast before Running. they can actually they're, 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 because Actually, you run before you can walk. Yeah, okay? it's true. And, and, and if you look at a company like Google, when I wrote the book, The 10X Rule, which has become an international phenomenon, it's been translated into multiple languages, um, Google uses the 10X Rule. They right. don't think in increments. They don't grow in increments. They're not interested in they, increments. They call them moonshots, right? To they're totally. Like, they're, Tell they're me looking, what a moonshot is. <laughs> they're, they're looking for a monster. They actually use the term 10X. They're looking for yeah. 10X. That, that's the criteria. We want to explode multiply revenue 10x twitter on the other hand tried to grow in increments yes so it tried to grow in increments it couldn't move fast enough so it gets killed in the marketplace so so the only people that are making it and look you got to start in increments i'm not i'm not saying you don't need to start it because you got to get a job sure a job is an increment income is an increment okay but at some point in your career i was telling a buddy of mine yesterday he probably makes four or five million bucks a year he invests none of his money none of his money is making money for him I'm like bro one day one day <laughs> one day you're gonna unhook for that thing you got and you need your Benjamins that you've worked so hard to earn and save and put in the wall of your house you got to get them to have babies right okay because when the babies start multiplying that's when you create wealth you can't create wealth just on the back of hard work there needs to be a plan hard work increments surges look for surges in wealth Everybody gets an opportunity, multiple opportunities in their lifetime to have surges or multipliers in wealth. And I'm not just talking about money, Bill. I'm talking about friends. Yep. I'm talking about access. I'm talking about power. I'm talking about influence. Um, I mean, the fact that I'm on a, a list of, of CEOs like Tim Cook and Elon Musk, I, I'm in the top. That, that's because I've multiplied my influence across social mediums and not just stayed in one vertical. Well, and, and to, here's, here's the interesting thing. You know, uh, a couple weeks back, I interviewed Pete the Planner. He's a financial advisor that actually writes for uh, USA Today. And one of the staggering statistics that he came back with, and I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm just going to generalize it. The majority of Americans today couldn't come up with $1,000 if for a medical expense if something major happened in their lives. Like, they couldn't do it. And so they don't have it in their savings account. They would have to basically borrow money from somebody. A thousand bucks. Now, now we're talking about basically the, 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 the content of this conversation is a million dollars is the new middle class. So, you know, you've you got people who are exponentially worse off in the sense that if they can't even come up with a grand to basically support them in an emergency, like, you know, we have a long ways to go to even get to a million, which then gets you to, haha, you're not done. You basically have entered middle class. Congratulations. But, but I think I think that that guy, that guy, the, the statistics from Pete, you know, were basically... 76% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Yes, that was Majority it. of Americans do not have $1,000. Uh, 
uh, most anybody that's got any retirement money is stuck with some Wall Street guy. You don't even, you can't even get access to the money. <laughs> anybody that does it. have money, <laughs> anybody that does have money is sitting in a bank and you can't actually get access to that money. I did a whole video on this. I went to the bank right where our office and I said, I want a million dollars. How long will it take you to get it to me? There's more than a million dollars in the account. When can I get it? Uh, let me get back with you. Yeah, okay. I can four, give you a it, check. <laughs> took four days to deliver the money. It took four days for me to go down there and Crazy. actually collect the money. So people don't know where their money's at. Now, yeah. the point of that is this. If, you're, if your goal is to become get in the middle class, you're going to end up. I'm just telling you, it's a scam. Yeah. The whole thing was built for Hillary. Okay, It was built for the, for the politicians to get your votes. Because if you get in the middle class, then you're like, you know, we're doing better than most people. We're all right. <laughs> we go on a vacation. We have credit cards. Look, you don't have any money. You don't have any freedom. Your mommy and daddy were wrong. Right. And even if they were right, it's 30 years later. It's a different game now. You have to have a different think. Okay. And the think today should be, hey, millionaire is the new middle class. I can introduce you to thousands of them that are going to tell you, I'm not greedy. I help my church. I help my community. I'm not f driving fancy cars. Yep. I don't have a bunch of Range Rovers and Rolls Royce. Most millionaires that I know are not like that. Totally. Okay? And, and, and they're trying to help people. They're trying to get their kids to decent schools. And they're still worried about, hey, what happens you know, when I can't produce income anymore? So, so they basically, you know, I, I am on a, a mission, man. I'm on a mission to wake people up and say, look, this middle class thing is not a point of safety. It is a place where you want to run as fast as you can. So tell me, tell me this. You know, you have an incredible life. You know, most people look at what you've been able to amass in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of the businesses you've created, the real estate holdings. You know, being able to jet set and go around the world wherever you want to go to. This is awesome. Was there a time in your life when you almost lost it all? Oh well, there, there, there's a time. You know, I went from middle class to poverty, man. I mean. Wow. I, I had a bicycle and I had a car and I had uh, a, a good education and I had a mom that loved me. I lost everything. Yeah. I lost my family. I lost my self-respect. I lost my self-esteem. Uh, I lost I lost any confidence that I had in myself. I was 25 years old. I had 70 stitches in my head and face. My mom couldn't recognize me. I mean, I had I had I couldn't I couldn't pay $275 a month in rent. What happened? I bought the idea that I needed to be satisfied with what I had, okay. that I needed to fit in, that I needed to not have the big dream. Mm. And, and see, I've always wanted to be rich. Mm -hmm. I was eight years old. And I'm like, I want to have, I, I lost a quarter one day and I came <laughs> home. I lost a quarter in the, in a manhole. I tell this story all the time. And I came home. My dad's like, never play with money. <laughs> and my grandfather, my grandfather grabbed me la later and says, son, the problem is not that you played with your money. The problem is that you only had one quarter. Oh, wow. Awesome. Said, ah, Different said, philosophy. Oh. And I said, dude, I'm never going to only have one quarter. What you want is an abundance of quarters so that you can waste it. I just went on a vacation. First vacation in my life. I didn't worry about the price before I got there. Didn't worry about the prices while I was there. And I did not care how much I spent. And it was ridiculous mm -hmm. after I left. The point of that is this. Every other vacation I've taken in my life, I worried about it before. Yep. I worried about it during and I worried about it after. And no wonder I've always hated vacations. Yeah. Because basically I was, I was never, I was taking them at Holiday Inns and Marriott's. Guess what? Those are middle class destinations. Okay. I'm not saying that's good or bad. I know people get offended by this. They're like, dude, you're so elitist. I'm just telling you the truth. People hate this message because I'm crashing up against something that they've held on to. Like, if I could just get here, I'd be all right. I got there and I wasn't all right because yeah. I never had enough. 2009. So, so talk yeah. about that. I mean, I really, I really want you to dig deep because I think this is the bi biggest misperception that most entrepreneurs have, that when I make X, I will be fine, right? And that X can be anything. It could be a couple million dollars. It can be 10 million. It could be whatever. 100 I've grand, seen, whatever, right? I, I've seen Mike Tyson go to yeah. a fight, take home $100 million and go freaking broke. You know what I yeah. mean? It's yeah. like, this is the, the thing that that's a fallacy. You know, having that money isn't the answer. Because if they did, you you know, people like Mike Tyson and, and celebrities would never go broke, but yeah, they do or, all the time. Or, 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 and it doesn't really matter what the goal is. We're talking about money a lot, but look, it's no different if it's friends, if it's, if it's influence, if it's good health. 
something will happen to you that you have not planned for. Right. Okay. If you if you knew everything that was going to happen in the future, you probably would not start today. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you. Who who would predict 2009? Who would predict ISIS? Who would predict a 9/11 a event? Who would predict an internet crash in 2000? You don't predict these things, okay? Right. You most people cannot confront evil. You can't confront yeah. how bad Zika. Who would predict a Zika? And 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 I, I, you no, you don't do those things, right? Who predicts that? Uh, for instance, I invest in apartments. I invest in apartments because I think I can take every every terrible thing that's going to happen, short of hurricanes and nuclear destruction, and I think those apartments are going to last longer than even a company like Apple. I think people will be renting 30 years from now from apartments that I own. Because that's the need, right? I, mean, I don't think they're going to be using that Apple phone. That company might not even exist, by right, the way. Okay, right. uh, I own apartments that have been around longer than the average a Fortune 500 company. So I'm hmm. looking for, I'm, I'm looking, see, see people underestimate what's necessary. Man, I'm gonna be in the best shape of my life. And then they get cancer. Right. Or they get hit by a car. Right. You were in the best shape of your life, dude. You just didn't plan on this other thing that happens, okay? I'm gonna find the perfect chick and then she cheats on you. I mean, things happen, <laughs> okay? And, and nobody wants to deal with the possibility of it. So what they do is they're like, I just want to be happy. It all comes down to, I just want to be happy. Yeah, until you're not. Right. Or, or if you talk about money, people are like, I don't need to get rich. Where does that thought come from? No. Well, it, it, comes, from, it comes from the I'm not worthy school of thought, right? Which is or, basically, or, I don't need or, it. I, I don't know if that's it. I think it comes from, it's not okay. Mommy yeah. and daddy said, we love you just the way, we, what way you are, little Billy. Right. Billy's got all these ideas. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. And mommy says, oh, that's good, Billy. That, that, that condemning kind of, yeah. oh, that's really good, Billy. Okay. <laughs> but we love you just the way you are. See, that's middle class. Middle yeah. class is not about an income. You know, if somebody told me the other day, they were selling a product to me and, and I said, how much is it? And they said, 45,000. I'm like, dang. He's like, we have expensive products. And I thought to myself, Wow, this guy thinks his products is 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 expensive. Mm -hmm. That is a middle class mentality. Right. A hundred dollars is a lot of money. A hundred dollars for lobster and steak is a lot of money. That is a middle class trap. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and that's what's holding that individual down. I don't think it's about not worthy. I think it's a conditioning that things. All right. So I'll take that. I'll take that premise. How do you break out of that conditioning? Right. So so if that's if that's the, the mindset of the middle class where, yeah. you know, I, I, I either I can't afford it or it's too expensive or what, whatever that is, how yeah, do we the, shatter that? You, you just flip the thing and say every time you say, oh, the hundred dollars, a lot of money. You need to remind yourself that you're only saying that because you don't have enough money, mm. because if you were a billionaire, you'd be like, I'll, I'll take 50 of them. Right. Who cares? I might give them to my friends. Right. OK. I just had a buddy sold his company for twenty one billion dollars. He gave. Uh, 13 Teslas away. <laughs> awesome. He's like, here, man. Okay. So now a guy walking in to look at a Tesla says, oh, that's a lot of money. See, you are saying if a Tesla is a lot of money to 100 grand, how will you ever get a million dollars? Right. Or 10 million or 100 million. Okay. If you're satisfied with your marriage the way it is today, trust me, it will degrade. Right. Because you take Never. it for granted. Yeah, never be satisfied, man. Always look for the next like, hey, I want to improve my marriage. I want to improve my money. I want to improve my finances. I want to improve my health. And, and, and so be on that search for a surge where your life explodes from, man, I can barely pay my bills to like, you know what? I can actually start hiring other people. Yes. Well, so, so even if you do that mind shift, right, and you start to say, look, I can afford it, I live in abundance, you know, this is the, I can always earn more money, you know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a transition that's not just that sort of mentality, but in terms of the actions you take. No, you got to go get the money. Yes, exactly. But I mean, you, you got to go, go get... But you got to go get the money by living in a, of an, in a sort of mentality of abundance, right? I mean, because if you look at it as sort of like I can't, I have to hoard everything. That's not necessarily going to get you to your end. No, you're either. broke again. You're broke. Yeah. You're poor. You're poor again. Okay, yeah. you're, you're poor. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. Of, a lot you're asking me in here. I mean, sure. I can go off into two different directions right now. You. Number one, this is not about some mental, like I'm just going to be positive and Thinking I'm going to operate with abundance. Right. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about massive amounts of activity. Okay, good. Let's okay, get into tremendous that. Tremendous amounts of activity. Like 
for me, it's never about money. Okay. It is about flows. It's about lots of flows. You know, people are like, man, why are you so successful in social media? I'm like, because they're flows. It's wealth, man. Right. I want friends. I want friends everywhere. Okay. I don't care how many people don't like me. I care how many people do like me. Mm -hmm. So, so the only way for me to get people to like me is to have an opinion. And so whether it's Facebook, we, we just started a Reddit account. And, and one of my staff says, you know, that's not your audience. I said, good, start a Reddit yeah. account. Net you know? new. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 and, and by the way, people shift personalities, right? Who you are today in this Skype is not who you're going to be in the movie tomorrow. It's not who you're going to be when you're watching right. a, a scary flick. It's not going to be who you're watching when you're watching a romance. It's not going to be who you are when you're with your wife and your kids. Uh, as opposed to maybe at a golf tournament. So people change. When I go from Reddit to Snapchat to YouTube to Facebook to Twitter to a country club event, I'm a different, a little bit different guy, different expectations. So I want wealth. So I, I want. So I think I think everybody would be in violent agreement with this sort of everything we've talked about. So let me just try to see this. Can I ask you to do something very difficult, which is boil it down to three action steps. Take yeah. three things that if someone who understands that being a millionaire is a new middle class, okay, I accept the premise. I understand where you're coming from. I get it. What are the three action steps that I can take coming out of this that will help me sort of make that shift? Okay. I mean, for, for, first thing is you, you, you got, you got, you got to give up on the anchor. Okay. okay. You got it. You got to kick people off the boat, the ideas, the upbringing, whatever you think. I mean, you really, the first thing people need to do is challenge everything they believe. Okay. The college thing. I'm going to buy a home. A home is one of the dumbest things a human being could do. <laughs> it's one of the things that people will fight the most about to say, no, it's a better deal than rent. Okay. But it's a dumb thing to do. It's a total middle class. Right. Okay. Uh, the, the IRA, the Keo, all that stuff that was sold to us, okay, are traps. Number two, you got to get around people that have an enormous think. Meaning so, what? Uh, not, not, not just have enormous think, but they have, a, they have an experience with enormous think. Okay. So, so when I tell a guy, you know, I mean, I remember when I wanted to make a hundred grand in a year. Now, now it's like, I want to make a million dollars in one hour. Hmm. So when I, when I tell most people that, they're like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> I mean, really? Okay. I tell my buddy that sold his company for $28 billion. He's like, dude, that's, that's a, that. Now, now you're thinking right. <laughs> okay. Like no problem with it. So you got to get your, 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 you got to surround yourself. Okay. Now this is very difficult. Everybody's like, yeah, I need those people. No, you need to get rid of the people you got with you right now. Mm, your peer because group. That, that guy, that guy that made 28 billion and says you can make a million dollars in an hour grant, you can make more than that. Okay. Right. Why are you that guy so small? Is, <laughs> he's not going to want to have lunch, breakfast or dinner with some of the people I'm hanging with right now. Right. Okay. And, and so you got to give something up. You have to be willing to give something up. Okay. Think big, be willing to give something up. And the third thing is that you got to take so much action. Like, like you, my question I ask myself all the time is this fear or quit. Hmm. Which one? Which one? Which neighborhood do you want to live in, bro? Yeah. Do you want to live in the neighborhood, the zip code of fear, or do you want to live in the zip code of quitters? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going, I know which neighborhood I got to live in. So, so, you know, I'm going to live in the neighborhood of fear. Which means feel the fear, but do it anyway, right? Do it. Do it, man. If yeah. you feel it, use the fear. Use it to know which direction to go. Because I don't want to be a quitter. I don't want to quit on my kids. I don't mm -hmm. want to quit on my wife. Hey, I don't want to quit on me. So th those are the three things. And, and then skill up. The fourth thing, if there is a fourth thing, sure. would be to skill up whatever you need to do that you don't like and that you're scared of. Which means basically flex that muscle, right? If, if you're weak in a particular area, then you need to strengthen it so that you have the power and the ability to do the things you need to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard a guy say recently he doesn't do anything he doesn't like to do. All right. And that's I'm awesome. like, well, well, that's good, bro. But I got, I'm going to tell you something. If you're just starting out, okay? yeah. if you're if you're <laughs> if you're rich today, that's fine. That's you don't fine. To, yeah. If you're flying around but, in your plane, awesome. But if you're it, basically just getting started, yeah, you're never going to. You grow. better do what you hate. You better do the stuff you don't want to do. And by the way, you better get great at the stuff you hate, because if you can get great at the stuff you hate, like I didn't want to be a salesman. Right. Nobody actually wants to be a salesman. Yeah. Who wants knocking on doors and calling people unexpectedly? Like, yeah, I, great. I, I, <laughs> I started my first business cold calling. Yeah. Millionaires. Yeah. Cold, like. Nobody wants to do that. Okay. Yeah. I, I got great at something I hated 
and it literally opened the door to the rest of my life. So I would just tell people, look, man, commit to getting great. Invest money in yourself. Read, learn, download audio programs. Like, like become a, you know, take all your dead time and turn it into learning time. That's awesome. Grant, I want to thank you so much for being on the program today. This is incredible advice. Love it. I think there's lots and lots to learn here. So thank you so much for, for being with us today. Hey, oh, thanks a lot. Awesome, man.